See that? That right there? That ugly, ugly, ugly speaker. It's ugly. Well, it's Baffle version 3. Two Lee audio drivers, the F15, the Fast 8. Both are wired in parallel. They're both 8 ohms, which means in parallel it's hooked up to the 4 ohm tap on the amps. Yeah, it's the third baffle. It's ugly, but it's good. And it's getting better and better with every version. So in fact, the first version of the baffle was so bad, I lost a bet and I had to shave my beard. Thankfully, my beard's growing back. Very thankful for that, because this double chin crap is not for me. So the first baffle, which was basically the full, full MDF board. It's a two feet wide by four feet tall, which I'll show right here in the picture. Problem with that first version of the baffle was that the speakers were too high, too many early reflections. I felt like I was being bombarded by, by highs. Uh, things were way too, they were a little harsh. The soundstage felt like, like it was cloned almost because of the amount of reflections. It felt like there was, there was multiple copies of the same instruments um, in the soundstage. A very weird experience. I didn't like it at all. So I tried all positioning possible in the room using that before I assumed that my deductions of the, that it was the baffle, the problem, and not just their positioning in the room because sometimes it's just the positioning in the room. Tried them everywhere. Closer to the wall, up to nine feet into the room, uh, toe in, major toe in, extreme toe in, no toe in. Issue was always there. And the more, the closer they got to me, the baffles got to me, the worse I felt those reflections uh, were coming out and ruining the sound. So version two, version two, which I'll show in this picture, which is, I didn't, it's, um, Man, version two. Sorry, this is version four. Oh, crap. So version two was more of a cathedral-shaped baffle. So some friends have told me. Um, I'm sorry, Jesus. That was significantly better. And I mean significantly better. A lot of the, the reflections had gone down. Um, the soundstage had opened up. The bass was felt almost just right. Like it was powerful it was punchy and it gave a lot of weight to the mid-range yes a lot of weight to the mid-range and we like weight in the mid-range we like details in the mid-range but we also like weight and we like textures so yeah so the version uh the second version which was like the cathedral shape when i would bring the speakers close really close to my seating position and um i would try some extreme toe in it made for a really cool effect. I mean, it felt like the soundstage just became a massive, deep, deep hallway. Like you still had things um, on, the, on, on the outer edges of the baffle. Not too much over to the side. Like I, didn't feel, I don't feel like my sidewalls disappear. Uh, kind of like they did with the, the, with the Verities. They felt like they disappeared a bit more of the sidewalls. But overall depth uh, and three-dimensional effect and, and, and feel like the instruments are, are, are very, very holographic. Like you feel like you can walk around them. With the second version of the baffle, it was, that was amazing. But of course I wanted more. I was like, okay, so let's, let's see what happens if I trim a little bit more of the baffle to remove some of the early reflections. And that sucked. Um, I lost a lot of weight in, in the mid-range and in the bass. Um, it almost felt like I was getting more reflections, strangely, and I think it's the wraparound effect that was coming around the baffle. Or so that's, I'm, I'm saying that based on, on what I, um, I heard Danny from GR Research talk about describing um, the uh, open baffle basics. So, yeah, um, and I am blind. I just looked into the spotlight. Um, so, yeah, exactly. So, by trimming this, it was too much. So, I went back to my clippings, my MDF clippings, because I just didn't feel like going back to the store and buying more MDF uh, boards. 
and I'll talk in, uh, and I'll explain why I'm using NDF instead of real wood, right? Now. It's very simple. But anyway, so I grabbed this piece back that I had cut off, uh, trimmed it a little bit here because I wanted to create a little gap, but not too big. I was curious to see what that would do. And I super glued it back on. And what I did was is also add a wing, just one wing in the back. I'll show you that in a second. So by adding that wing and re-adding that piece here, ah, uh, now I'm getting the in-between that I was looking for. I get the slam, I get the mid-range weight, the textures. I don't feel bombarded by, uh, by early reflections coming off the baffle, even when I bring the speakers way up to my seating position, almost in a near-field configuration. I'm close. I'm close to what it is I'm looking for. This is awesome. But I have to make a fourth version of the baffle. And, there's good, and I know the fourth version is probably going to lead to a fifth version of the baffle. Why? So here's what I'm going to do for the next one. What I'm going to do for the next one is I'm going to need to, unfortunately, purchase new MDF boards. So I have two three-quarter MDF boards uh, glued and fat and binded together. So I have a one and a half inch, one and a half inch, inch thick a baffle. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make... Another baffle where instead of having the drivers um, in, in cut at an angle, there's going to be more of a straight shape on one side and a curve down on, on, on the side and bring the top driver much closer to the F15 driver, bringing the time, like the, the, the alignment much, much closer to one another. Um, so that's going to be a test. And on that same baffle, I am also going to test instead of having the fast eight um with the f15 i am going to try a tweeter and potentially a horn tweeter to see what that does to see if i like that because overall so far the plus of what i'm getting with these and when i have a good amplifier i don't know good amplifiers such as things like this gives such a natural tone and flesh to the instruments. And when I say flesh and instruments, things like the skin on the drums. Boy, do you feel them. It sounds really, really realistic. The size of the image of the instruments in a soundstage is enormous. It's very large in my room. And um, the depth of the soundstage, so deep, incredibly deep. Uh, I had a few friends come in for a listen for a couple evenings. Uh, one of them I know was very skeptical at first. I was like, oh boy, here we go, a DIY. It's like going to try a homemade wine and it's going to suck. I'm going to be polite, but it's going to suck. So I sat down and I looked at his reaction when I hit play. As soon as the singer started, <laughs> started singing, he went back in the show and he was like, whoa. And he, at the end of the song, he just turned around. He's like, okay, I'm surprised. He's like, I, was ex I wasn't expecting this. He says, this is amazing. But it's not perfect. It doesn't have that pinpoint accuracy in the resolution and the image. Um, and I'm suspecting I might never get that pinpoint accuracy with just full range drivers. I th Maybe? I don't know. I'm far from giving up on the full on dual full range drivers. I love it because it gives such a density to the to the to the notes. Uh, it gives such a liveliness to the sound. Right now, the way they're set up, it's like you are sitting front stage. But I mean front stage. So that doesn't mean that things are in front of you. When you're sitting front stage at a, at a, at a, at a show, you're looking up. And that's what you're doing here right now. I'm looking up. It's like the, 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 the people are on top of a stage that is just like that starts maybe a foot and a half, a foot and a half over my chest. So I'm like, you know, you're sitting there. I'm going, oh, like they're, they're, they're up there. So if I go and sit down. So sitting here, you can tell there's a good amount of towing, like a lot of towing. As a matter of fact, so both drivers cut across in front of me. They're pointed. They're pointed on the outside on the on the on the outside chairs on each side so sitting here so previously before i added this driver and this driver on the top regardless of the baffle configuration what was happening is with only the f15 drivers my sound stage was here like right over here now that i added these guys with any baffle configuration now the sound is back to taking the entire wall 
the singers are high, they're big. Um, at first I thought they were exaggerated, um, but I don't find them exaggerated at all anymore. Actually, what's happening now is, is when I hear other sound systems, I find the image looks tiny. So what does that do? What it does is that because images in my soundstage are so big, you kind of get the impression that there's not as much space between the items. So let's say if the singer's here and you have a piano there and you have a cello over there or a guitar over there. Like, so the singer feels like takes is taking up this much space and then you have the piano, which would be taking up this much space and then same thing for the other side. So you don't get an, you don't get as much of a feel of large air between the instruments. You do feel their distances apart and you you do feel like you could walk around them absolutely absolutely especially when i turn the lights off and you don't see anything except for a couple little lights on the amp wow you have no idea or concept of where the speakers are in the room when it's pitch black in here like none it's 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 like the room is an extra 10 feet deeper than what it is uh it's like the sound reaches all the way up to the top and it feels like even some objects, especially in the, um, uh, is it the Roger Waters album, Amused to Death? <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of the tracks, I think one of them is Three Wishes. At the beginning, when you hear the woman's voice talk on like a TV or radio, her voice is there. It's on the end of the wall over there. And on the track Late Home or Late Coming Home Part 1, that water drop at the beginning there's two water drops that come down one feels like it falls in front of me and the next one feels like it falls behind me in the back corner it used to land it used to land right on my shoulder now it lands far behind me yeah so interesting eh? so now when i go and listen to other sound systems uh or or sorry instead of other sound systems when I plug in a, uh, like I, I try a regular bookshelf speaker, for instance, the Buchart uh, S400 MK2, or is it MK3? I don't know, whatever, the latest one. Um, <coughs> the soundstage is deep, it's wide, but elements seem smaller in the soundstage, giving the sense that you have a lot of space between the instruments, but everything feels smaller. So to me, it affects the, my, my, the engagement factor when I listen to music. So this is where I'm at with these things, with these baffles. Um, I started working on a Patreon page so that, uh, no, it's not, at this point, it's not to make money. Maybe I'll start subscriptions at a dollar, a dollar, a dollar. Basically, it's you're buying me a coffee so that I can stop spending money, my money on coffee and I can keep buying snake oil for you guys to listen to. But no, in all seriousness, why the Patreon page is because <coughs> I want to give you guys sound demos and sound clips. The problem is, is I can't really give you good sound demos and sound clips on YouTube short of royalty-free music, but royalty-free music, let's face it, doesn't have always the best recordings. And on YouTube, well, every time I've tried to upload a short or anything like that, it keeps getting copy, copyright block, copy block, cop, cop, cock block, copyright, copyright cock block. No, that doesn't work. Anyway, uh, yeah, so those are... Those are where I'm at with the baffles. I will be back with a couple more videos very soon. We are going to be looking at part two of the DAC Fest. That's right, part two of the DAC Fest. Back there, there is a Sonnet Morpheus underneath there that you can't see. And the Venus 2 from Denifrips is there again. Um, and I got to do a follow-up video to, the, to, to Thomas's deckware. Come on. You don't fire me and not expect a rebuttal video, so it's coming.